So Tim, back again in central London this time, <laughs> the west end of London on Charlotte yeah. Street, and we're standing in front of what looks like a restaurant called Carousel. But it's not just a restaurant, is it? It's a bit more complicated than that. Carousel is a, a sort of umbrella brand over a space that's effectively about other chefs coming in and collaborating. There's a wine bar in there that has their own menu that's consistent, but there's also a bunch of other stuff going on. I think it's a really clever response to the toughness of the industry around us at the moment. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's go check it out. Said this is Carousel. What is Carousel? Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we're standing in the guest chef dining room here, where basically every week, two weeks, we host a different chef from around the world um, to come and join our team in the kitchen, and together we sort of execute a tasting menu for um, sort of 50 guests at a time, five nights a week. Just did and you say different guest chef every week? Pretty much every single week. Some stay for a fortnight. Um, but generally, yeah, it's like literally every week back to back and has been that way for the last eight years. Or so this is so. just, this is effectively a, like a dry hire restaurant, like a dry hire studio. You, you walk in and it's ready to roll. Well, not quite, because it's, it's, it's very collaborative. So um, often, more often than not, the chef will come on their own and they'll be plugging into our team yeah. uh, in the uh -huh. kitchen. So we sort of, it's our suppliers, it's our ingredients, the network of suppliers that we're kind of working with. Um, and so you might have ideas from, I don't know, Southeast Asia or uh, wherever it might be. And we're sort of saying, well, no, like, let's use this fish from Cornwall and this, this like mangalitsa pigs grown in Herefordshire and that sort of thing. It's like very much kind of, you know, two way thing. And then obviously we look after the front of the house side of things as well. So. And there's some big names here as well. I mean, there's, there's been some quite serious people through the door. That you'd want on your CV as a young chef. Yeah, absolutely. I think over the years, like it's it's nice. We had a really really good balance between sort of chefs who are kind of um, you know up and coming and just about to kind of make a big leap in their careers. It's been always a balance of those kind of people who you might not have heard of, and then some really really brilliant restaurants from cities around the world. I guess the idea is that by having a team here, sort of taking care, hopefully of all of the annoying bits, like just gives them, you know, they can come and think about what they want to cook and then fly over and come and do that. But so you, you're chasing them down? These poor innocent people are wandering around their own country and you're phoning them up and saying, come to London? Seriously? Um, yeah, I mean, that's how it started. Really? Yeah, that's how it started. We just kind of get in touch with people and say, look, would you like to come and cook in London? And it's, it's absolutely the opposite of like, rent a restaurant box. This is, oh, you're, yeah. you're, I mean, you're talking about effectively curating, right? Absolutely, yeah. I hate wanna... the word too, it's okay. You don't have to... <laughs> nobody, nobody has to love that word. <laughs> um, the idea was born out of saying like, well look, there's these brilliant people doing brilliant things elsewhere. Like, what if we can bring them to London and give people the chance here to, to try their food without having to get on a plane, was essentially the kind of, the idea. I didn't know too much about Carousel, and then um, when Ollie reached out, I obviously had a Google search, and then I, I saw if a couple of my friends have done, you know, residencies here. So I spoke to them, and they're like, "Look, it's a multifaceted kind of hospitality hub, right? You know, it's got all these different kind of cool operations happening, um, and one of their um, programs is to invite guest chefs." over to do um, set menus or whatever, residencies. I think yeah, yeah. the option was to do two weeks, but I, I can only do one. You've walked in to effectively sort of do multi-use space, and you're yes. doing some stuff that's very, very specifically Asian. And, yeah, you know. I feel like it's, you know, for us, it's operating Chinese food in, in Melbourne. It's not just, you know, wok burners and duck ovens and steamers. The ethos of our restaurant is cooking Chinese food through almost an Australian lens. My approach here is to kind of showcase some ingredients, you know, that's local around here, while still using a lot of flavors and techniques that, you know, are from Li Fook and, you know, referencing a lot of Chinese cuisines. But there's not an ambition to open in London right now. I mean, no, no, absolutely not. Just, no. So you're doing this because it's, fundamentally you're doing this because it's fun, right? It's, absolutely, you know, it's, <laughs> and that's exactly it. Tonight's your first night, isn't it? It is, yeah. And cooking exposed like this in front of this many people, is that okay with you? you yeah, okay? I think so. You know, the restaurant's been around for 10 years now, yeah. you know, so, it's just trying to sell, not sell them the idea, but you know, kind of just tell them the story of how we formed and you know, the style of food we do, and we're going to pair it with you know, a lot of British produce. And there's a bunch of quite impressive people coming tonight. I've had a look at the guest <laughs> yeah. list. Are you, going to, um, are you going to work in a room? Are you going to come yeah, out and just like, shake hands and talk? Absolutely. I think you know, that's, it's a missed opportunity if I don't do this. You know? so, yeah. And it's also just to see what you know, their reaction's like. You know?
So, Will, you did a guest spot here. How long ago was that and how did it come um, about? It's about two and a half years ago now. Uh, me and Jack, my business partners, we came from a very different world of two Michelin star, five star hotel. And at the old site on Carousel, it was all just, it was just such a, like a melting pot. You got all these new residents coming in who bring all these different ideas. And I'd say I learned more about how to run a kitchen in like two weeks. Than uh, you did working then. alongside yeah, because, like, Heston Blumenthal. Heston Blumenthal, five, five, something goes wrong, you've got a maintenance department on the phone. Like here we had the head chef like with a screwdriver at the back of the fridge, like yeah. changing the decompressors and stuff like that. It's and more it, like a real restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So for us, it was just a real education. Yeah. What they do here is they take a lot of the operational strain away and they just let you focus on the food and the concept. Yeah. So you've got a team. You've got a front of house team who do a briefing and they're so knowledgeable. They'll curate a drinks list with you, a wine list, cocktail pairings. It not only teaches you how to do it, but it also lets you do what you're good at. They've had some massive chefs in here. So when we did it, we were pummeled to have been invited. Is having this on your CV a really big oh, yeah. thing now? It's very well respected among the chef community. They all know exactly what, what these guys are doing here. They've got a great amount of integrity. Yeah. It really was like one of those pivotal points in our, in our journey. My name is Santiago Lastra, the chef co-owner of Cold Restaurant. I used to work at Noma in Copenhagen, so I worked there for about a year and a half. After that, I started traveling the world, making different pop-ups and events, and my friend was doing Swedish food, and I was doing some Mexican dishes. So then I thought, what about we do, we use the Nordic ingredients, but in a Mexican way? And it was a success. A week after, Oli from Carousel sent an, a message to us to come to his new project. I arrived and Oli and, and Ed, they, uh, they treat me so well. Like, they, they treat me as I knew what I was doing. <laughs> they believe in me. After the pop-up that I did in the two weeks in Carousel, someone saw that in Instagram and they invited me to cook in Italy and I stayed there for three weeks, and then someone saw that and invited me to go to Hong Kong. With like this little push from Ed and, 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 and Oli, I could literally travel the whole world. Now we are here in Col, eight years after that first residency. We've been open for over two years. We got a Michelin star. To open your own restaurant with a new concept in a city like London is very hard. Restaurant on this level and on this size needs to have big support you know i'm really thankful with uh, with the guys from carousel to give me that opportunity and bet your own business to compromise your own reputation to someone that is not there yet so Ollie, what's your background have you always been into food yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i like i got into food from probably the age of 14. one of the things that got me to cooking was uh, gardening that kind of led me into cooking because I found myself making a lot of salads and I just like cooking produce that um, I'd grown. So how did the idea for Carousel come about? Was this, was this something that you wanted to do? So before Carousel we were doing these pop-ups. Um, one of them was called Rumble in the Deli. It was basically me and our old chef and a mate of mine called Max Pacetti were like the house cooks and we would invite people to cook against us in like some sort of like fight club themes. When we then got off of the site for Carousel, I was 22 and not really ready to like go and like open my own restaurant, but like we wanted to do something. So we kind of started talking about um, how we could essentially shape a concept that was built around a collaboration where we could operate a restaurant, but I didn't necessarily have to be like the chef. There's a new chef coming through most weeks. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. That logistically sounds like a huge challenge, like getting that many people to come in. It must take a lot of planning. Yeah, yeah. Like we. Does that cause any headaches? Yeah, no, of course, yeah. of course it does. You know, my phone rings and there's a chef who 
um, it's meant to be coming to cook, but they've had like some sort of family issues and they had to cancel like three weeks out. And so what, like, what happens then? Well, then like we you kind got, of like, like some reserves. Yeah, we we had to kind of like yeah dig dig yeah, deep yeah. into. <laughs> you got like, like a bench. Yeah, we right. know, we got like lots of friends and like people right, and there's always, and like we're always in conversation with a lot of people, and like you know we we want to have our calendar like but six seven months ahead of time so that gives us enough time Sometimes to you can sort of bump people forward if you exactly, need to exactly yeah, exactly yeah. and just like that's so that's we just did a bit of a yeah. reshuffle like we don't really tend to like invite really really serious kind of like two three one michelin star right. cooks who like kind of are like really kind of uptight you need to be up for a challenge you know it's not like always gonna be perfect you need, you're gonna be outside of your comfort zone yeah. so you just like really need to be up for collaboration and like when it comes to to, to egos it's like you know, like if, if if I feel like there's going to be kind of a, uh, an issue, not an issue there, but like cause it's not a problem, but it's just about kind of like planning for that. They're here for a week, but we're here forever. So like if it's not good or it's not well planned or not well executed, then we don't really have a business. Well, it's sort of in quite a challenging time for the restaurant yeah. business. Right? I mean, London yeah, obviously yeah. is a little bit of a bubble, but yeah. you know, increasingly people uh, maybe uh, aren't dining out quite as much as they yeah. might have done. Everything's getting more expensive, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, do you think that this business model sort of sets you guys apart a little bit? It makes I, you I think it definitely gives people a reason to come back. Well, that means like, it's the same environment, it's the same staff on the floor, like it's the same ki like core kitchen team. Yeah. But yeah, like the food experience totally, totally changes. And look, we also do sometimes change like the actual decor and like the room. Like we had King from New York and you know, they're like white tablecloths and like loads of beautiful, colorful flower, flowers. Punk Royale, who came from Stockholm, like we put bin bags on the windows. We had lasers and UV lights and like graffiti everywhere right. and, like, and like turned into a nightclub. So like we're like really open to like kind of bringing whoever's, whoever the chef is or the person, like bringing their experience to life. This is more than just a collab. This is more than just a residency. This is kind of... Yeah, we've worked hard at it yeah. to make, I mean, fundamentally the experience for the chefs as good as possible, right? Because like, if the guest chefs we're bringing in don't have a great time and don't get a lot from it, then, you know, it's a small world. Oh, they'll tell their friends. No, yeah, no question. It's a business plan where resilience is built in from the very beginning. I mean, if you want to take risks, you could have just opened a regular old restaurant and, and either, you know, succeeded or failed. You've got half a dozen different sort of strands of revenue going through this, and they've got to buffer each other against each other. Definitely. Think, when, when something, you know, one thing might be firing and something might be, you know, if that's spluttering, something else will kind of pick up the slack. And I definitely found that during, during COVID. And I think having a quite a kind of flexible, multifaceted business was a real strength. Something I've noticed is, is that with, with the strikes and heat waves and mm -hmm. funeral, like state funerals and stuff, like the wine bar, which is a la carte and we get a lot of walk-ins and it's lunch, dinner, Ooh. six days a week. That has been very susceptible to the ups, like yeah. the, the ups uh -huh. and downs of like the conditions that we're trading in. Whereas with the guest chefs and, and the events, which are sort of pre-booked and, and pre-paid, that's kind of been a bit more robust through it. From behind the scenes, it's the same people operating different things. And I yeah. think, so that's kind of where it gets interesting from a business perspective.